Forget Richard Gere and Julia Roberts. It's Peter Andre and Katie Price. Good night. Katie and Peter are back and invite you to join them behind closed doors. For four months, they are giving you unrestricted access to their lives. What's going on? I'm coming out tonight. Um, What's up? Oh, yeah. What's up? Um, dear, dear, dear. John! John! <laughs> Brighton, you haven't an affair! <laughs> They've got it all. Piandre! Three adorable kids. Come <laughs> Hello. Hello. A beautiful house. And, of course, each other. Um, um, sorry, I'm just trying to reach... Discover how working mum Katie survives under the glare of the media spotlight. Find out if Pete has what it takes to get him back to the top. Why need chocolate at night? And what dramas will unfold as Katie and Peter live their incredible dream. It's going to be one hell of a ride. <laughs> Coming up on this week's Katie and Peter, the next chapter. Pete struggles to get it up. Is it Katie's lucky night? She's going to get pregnant tonight. Good night. She oh, I'm not. So not. And both of them mingle with the A-listers in Madrid. I have no idea who that any of them are. Pete has just flown in from Spain and is touching down at Gatwick Airport. Tomorrow night, both he and Katie are due to be the guests of honour at a glitzy magazine launch party in Madrid. Pete has been in Mallorca for the last few days rehearsing, as he's due to sing live at the event. However, earlier today, he discovered Katie's passport in his luggage. So with his wife grounded in the UK, Pete has been forced to courier it back to London himself. This is love for me to fly all the way back. <laughs> from Spain in the middle of my rehearsals to give Kate back her passport, which, let me tell you, is not my fault that she picks up a bag that she bought for me, that I use. She decides to take it out shopping one day and puts her passport in it. For what reason, I don't know. So what am I supposed to do? Go looking through my bag going, oh, I wonder if any of Kate's stuff's in here. So bear with me, I'll find some. But before he heads home, Pete needs to pick up some medicine for the kids who are sick at home. And it's not long before he's stopped by a fan. Well, a fan of Katie, anyway. Now, management, before you spin out because I'm signing Kate's book, she has got mine, but it's at home. So she says. It is, trust me. OK. Then what's on chapter... No, just... No, wait. don't... I'll read it when it right. first comes out. Too. So I'll go. Michelle, thank you so much. I think you two are great. Pete may be in a rush, but he still finds time for a quick trip down memory lane. I saw you when I was younger at Fairfield Oh, OK. And I touched your hand, and my friend was crying, going, I can't believe you touched your hand. And I was like, I did, I did. Nice to meet you guys. Thanks a lot. Pete is looking forward to seeing all the family, but he's unlikely to get a warm reception. At home, the boiler is broken, the house is cold, and the kids are unwell. I'll get to see little bundles of joy with sick everywhere, apparently. So, no heating in the house, kids are sick, and wife is moaning. So it sounds like it's gonna be a really good night. Having arrived home with Katie's passport in hand, there's little time to spare. Both he and Katie are to board a private jet bound for Madrid in only a few hours' time. G'day, everyone, JJ. My little beauty. Oh. Hi, son. Hi, yeah. You're right. Oh, yeah. You want to talk a bit more? Do you miss me? Yeah? How much? Oh, I'm here now. I'm here now. With Pete away, the house seems to have fallen apart, and it's not only the kids that have had a rough time. Yeah? I haven't eaten anything. Well, that's silly, isn't it? Why? Because I've been sick. And Harvey? He's yeah. not good, bless him. Hmm? He's not good. 
Well, I don't care if I don't leave till about midnight, Kate. But I do have to go tonight. That's the prob. Uh, we have to go tonight. Well, we have to go, yeah. You're fine. You can get on the plane. Anyway, you're going to love yeah, it. Oh. It's the other way round. And someone's on their deathbed. They'd be lying there. Oh, no. I would have just said, don't. I would have just said, I can't go. But you're fine. So you can go. So it's worth every bit that I came back. Right. And out of love, I did it. As Katie will be leaving the country in only a few hours, she has asked the family physician, Dr. Forsyth, to pay an emergency late night visit. Junior, when you see the doctor, say, hello, Dr. Evil. For any other child, a passing bug is no huge concern, but Harvey is always monitored closely as his condition means that complications can easily occur. Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Open your mouth and stick your tongue out. Oh, his arm's gone in again. Oh, won't we? That's great. Good boy. That's very good indeed. You're going to have some more medicine and it'll help your belly. Okay? The doctor has diagnosed Harvey with a nasty bout of gastric okay. flu. <laughs> right. Good boy. Yeah. Well done. Gee, that's very impressive. Very good boy. Yes. Give us it up. There's oh. no magic medicine, you see. Say thank you, Doctor. Oh, dog, Doctor. Okay. Doctor Forsyth is confident that Harvey will soon recover with some R&R, &R, and Pete is relieved that it looks like the kids are on the mend. Who's your best friend in the whole world? <laughs> say it louder. <laughs> Take your dummy out and say it, please. <laughs> Daddy's missed you. <laughs> Junior's boobies. <laughs> <laughs> Time is running out if they're to make the flight to Spain, and while Katie's presence at tomorrow's party hangs in the balance, the doctor delivers his diagnosis. Go on, tell the truth what you said, and I'm, I'm, I've just said to him, what do you think? Am I going to get the diary as soon as you put it to my stomach? Is that... Yeah, I'm afraid that uh, certainly, you know, the symptoms suggest that, you know, he's about to get more severe sort of gastroenteritis. And it would be most unwise to be on a plane tomorrow. You now, if this happens, it's pretty miserable at the best of times. Yeah. And to be, uh, can you, you believe know, that? 30, I can feel up. it, my, my belly rumbling. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Pete's face. It's disastrous news for Pete, as not only has he flown back from Spain, he's desperate for Katie to be there to support him. Bye. But it's going to take more than an upset tummy to keep Katie from a good party. Just because he said I can't go, I'm not saying I'm not going. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, why, didn't want to say that. why don't you make him tell me for then? No, because he's saying he doesn't advise that I go. I'm not saying I'm not going. We're not leaving till midnight, so I'll just see how I go. Okay, if you're going to get sick, you're going to get sick. There's no doubt about it. But, but you've been feeling sick all day, you said, right? Only like in the past hour, I've been feeling rumble bumbles. Right. I'm not saying I'm not going. Coming up, they've made it to Madrid, but should Katie have taken the doctor's advice? I look like shit and I feel like shit. Pete's command of language knows no bounds. Bienvenido ok a España. And is Katie reviving her music career? Gotta wait till the midnight hour. Katie and Peter have arrived in Madrid as they're due to attend a magazine launch party tonight. Despite being advised by the doctor to not fly, Katie is here, and fortunately her rumble bumbles are okay. But she is quick to phone home to see how the kids are doing. Harvey was up singing, dancing, putting his telly on. Now he's asleep now. June is fine, went to school, and the baby was up at night as well. This is an important event for the UK-based magazine, and they've flown in all their major players and put them up in the classiest hotel in Madrid. Thank you. Tonight, Pete will be performing in a supergroup, specially assembled for the launch party. It's a big honour for Pete, but he's a little nervous about the set list. Obviously, there are three songs I've never done before, and the only one I've ever heard of before today was Midnight Hour. And even that, I didn't know that well. So uh, to actually be getting up and singing them tonight, all three are new tracks for me. It's going to be a bit of a challenge, but I like a bit of a challenge. It makes it more exciting. Hey. What? I'm really 
I wasn't doing anything. Why do you always say that? When I was just standing there, and I was thinking of going out there. Now they are settled in, Pete Kinda. and Kate decide to head off for some sightseeing around Madrid. You look good. You look like a little Dolce Vita, baby. OK, now we go. Look at you, that's what I mean, dead. Saw that. Oh, you know. I've seen it on camera, Pete. And as they hit the town, Katie's thoughts turn towards tonight's glamorous party. You've got to do my own hair and makeup tonight. Oh, yeah, but you so look I don't great, know what anyway. I'll be like. You're going to be fantastic. Do you love me? Hmm. Well, you're not sure. This minute and hour of the day, he's just the best friend to me. Well, it's still not my best friend. That's still something. Fred, acquaintance. He turns me on when you say But he's so weird. Why does I that turn know. you on? I why really, why does it turn really you on? Does. What, just... when I say you're my best friend or acquaintance? Yeah, just like... Like you're you know. nothing? Yeah, like I'm shit. Why does that turn you on? I don't know. Is that weird? No, Pete, it's normal. You're gonna be my butler when we get to the room. Oh, yes. Phone calls you've got to make for me. Oh, yes. You'll be my butler and I might give you a tip. Oh. I've forgotten my wallet, so I'll have to think of other ways. Oh, don't. No, OK. Oh, just carry on. Master Kate and Butler Pete head back to the hotel to get ready, whilst manager Claire gives them the rundown of the evening's events. At 10 o'clock, there's going to be some speeches. And there's a big famous model in Spain, and she's going to introduce you and Kate on stage. I bet she's fucking and stunning, and had all her hair and makeup done for oh, this well, event. Let's and look at me. Yeah. Kate, what are you talking about? Look at you. Without your shower cap on, you look lovely. <laughs> I look fucking gross. I've, I've just had a massage, I've got oil in my hair, because she did. Had it blow dried yesterday. She's going to look gorgeous. So, you'll have your eyes full, Pete. <sighs> Spanish top model, she'd be nice, Why dark, you... greeky looking for you. Uh, look, can you hurry up to Newport tonight? It, don't want to go. It's my hair, makeup. I just hate myself, Claire. I feel so unprofessional not having been made up for this. Really do. That's Katie's so not well. used to doing her own hair and makeup, and to make matters worse, she's still feeling unwell. Oh, I'm feeling like I don't want to go and be pressured now because I know we have to go and I feel so uncomfortable. Okay, you know what you do? Look, there's a dressing room out the back, Kate. Okay, there's a dressing room out the back. That's I know, but Pete, it's not that. Can I just say something? Yeah. It's a big event. I have no makeup artist, no hairdresser. I look like shit and I feel like shit. Yeah, you don't look like okay? shit. But what I'm saying is there is a big... So I know, but you know that when I go down there's pictures, this, that, so yeah. it's too late when I get there. Let me ring and see if we can get hair spray. Oh, I fucking hate myself. Um, hello, do you have any hairspray in the hotel at all? It's time to leave, so in the absence of hairspray, they go all out with the perfume. If you don't feel good, you may as well smell good. If my boobs were like that, they'd be good, better, wouldn't they? Just in the nick of time, manager Claire has tracked down a can of the all-elusive hairspray. Charm. Is it poison? No, it's hairspray. Who could have predicted that it was such a good cure for rumble bumbles? Do you know what? Just for a laugh, I'm going to put a bit on my head, just to make it a bit shiny. Eh? We need to spray this little bit here. Do you know it kills me how pretty she is and how she hates herself? I'll put it in your bag. No, I need a bit. Pete, you've got no hair. You've got just to make it shiny like this. Do you know what, if Kate, look, I'm just so you are vain. I shall do one. Vain. Come on then. With shiny hair, they finally head off to the party. But Pete needs just one more thing to be ready. Do you have any chewing gum? Yes, chewing gum. Chewing gum, I don't understand this. Uh, gum, gum, uh, pizza. <laughs> pizza. 
Ah, Chavi Gung. Chavi Chavi Gung. Sorry, I can't. Okay, no problem. Thanks. <laughs> The Paps are out to greet Madrid's A-listers, but Katie feels a little bit out of her comfort zone. It's so weird coming to a country where we're probably surrounded, not, they don't know who we are over here, but the people who are coming in are probably massive people in Spain, and I have no idea who they are. The party's only just begun, but Katie is already flagging. Already got all the chocolate! Oh, oh, so am I. Okay. Pete, meanwhile, has spotted something that has perked him up. They look so good. Huh? You are? They look so good. Do they? Yes. I can them. They look brown. Media mogul Richard Desmond invited Katie and Peter to tonight's party as he wanted them to act as celebrity ambassadors of the UK edition of the magazine. Peter have been asked to make a speech, so Pete, determined to make a good impression, jots down the Spanish opener. But first up is magazine owner Richard Desmond. Thank you everybody for coming here tonight. Our friends and our celebrities, Miss Jordan from England, who I don't, I don't know if you know. And if you don't know and her now husband. in Spain, I'm sure you will know her soon. So that's it. Thank you very much for being here. And back to my team. Thank you. The time has come for Katie and Peter to take to the stage. Following the unintended snub from host Richard Desmond, Pete is keen to make a good impression on the celebrity crowd. Buenas noches. Bienvenido OK a España. Está muy, muy contentos de estar aquí. Yo soy y mi mujer es Katie. Gracias a Richard Desmond and everybody here tonight. Why don't you say, like, you're welcome, welcome everyone. <laughs> anyway, we're very happy to be here tonight. It's a lovely venue. We're going to be doing some beautiful music later. And I would just like to say, good evening, everyone, by the way, and it's nice to be over here. And this magazine, I'd like to see myself on the cover. And her husband, thank you. Don't worry about him, worry about me. Wife and husband, thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Pete is due to perform on stage with the band in five minutes, giving his manager Claire time to run through a few pointers. Now think of all the advertisers and people endorsement-wise that are going up there. So you need to look slick and nice. So go and be cheesy, will you? I don't really know these songs. No, I know, but they'll be seeing you. Don't go and be cheesy or anything like that. What do you mean? Do you? Yeah. Oh, no, but we stop them. Everyone does that with the band and stop and all that. Despite Pete's reassurances, Claire still seems to have cause for concern. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give a huge Madrid welcome for Mr. Peter Andre. performance is over and the night has been a roaring success and Katie is full of praise for Pete. I think you look really good that tie made it as well. Really? Yeah. Thank you honey. I love singing like that with a bit of grit. But yeah. But I you're mean... the kind of singer that sounds better live than you do on a CD anyway. I was saying that to oh, Claire. Thank you. But you know you are. 
love it. I love doing live stuff. Next time it'll be me up there. Yeah. Doing my grip. Ah. I'm gonna ah. wait till the midnight hour. I'm gonna wait till the midnight hour. When my love is to shine. Hey, I'm mucking about and you're really trying. I'm not. What do you reckon I can't wait to do now? Take your makeup off, put your PJs on, have a hot chocolate, and go to bed. Now. And. I wish. <laughs> oh, is it your nugget? Mate, that's. <gasps> look at your. Look, everyone, at that onion. That's just a one half that is one ball. Really? That's half that is not one a ball. ball. That is not. Come on now. Back at the hotel, Pete has high hopes for the evening's finale. Good night, people at home. Thanks for joining me and my friends. She's going to get pregnant tonight. Good night. <laughs> she oh, is I'm not. so not. She is so not. You keep your. You know what? He thinks he's getting it, and he's so not. Good night. Tease him in the left. Coming up, Katie enters the 21st century. Well, every morning I have to put up with, you've got mail, you've got mail, and him on his Facebook. So his wife is going to be the same and have Facebook. Pete sets himself a realistic target. What I want to do is I want to achieve Michael's discipline, Rocky Balboa's attitude, Jean-Claude Van Damme's physique. And Katie shows Peter it's horses for courses. Go! Oh, fuck! Oh.